The Doppler effect is another one of those things where it is actually pretty cool. Like, you know, I know there's a movement amongst young, angry teens to hate science. I get it. I was actually, the irony is I probably hated science in high school too, but that's the fault of the textbooks or whatever, because science is not boring. The Doppler effect is super trippy. So the best way to explain it, it it's, a, it's an effect you see in sound, but the best way to explain it is using just mechanical normal waves. And so what you have is frequencies of wavelengths like this, right, that are back to back versus this. If you actually analyze the sound, you know, the frequency when the waves are short like this and crunched up together is like this, right? And then when it's long and kind of sweeping like this, the sound would be like low, right? So the longer the wavelength, the lower the sound, versus The Doppler effect is trippy because it explains that phenomenon when you're standing by the side of a busy road and a car passes you and it always makes a sound, right, like that. Again, this is pretty cool. So let me explain it like this. The reason those cars pass you make that sound is because, let's say you had a boat, perfect picture of a boat, in a lake. If the motor is running and it's just chilling in the center of a lake, you'll basically see perfect concentric circles forming around it. As those vibrations happen in the water, the waves will move outward in a perfect circle, just like that. And that's actually like, you get that. That's totally accurate to what you see if you have some, you know, something disturbing the water. But what happens if the boat starts to drive, or do boats drive? What, like, you know, whatever, move forward in this direction, okay? Check this out. If you still had the perturbation of the water and you're creating these waves, what happens is the boat will start to catch up with its own waves, right? So what you'll see is it's still making the waves, but as it approaches, again, it's moving, as it drives in the same direction that the waves are leaving, it's, they start to bunch up in front. And everybody knows that. It's a wake, you know, these like little, you know, like wake border kids and stuff. In front of the boat, you'll have a crunched up wave like this. And behind it, the waves will start to spread out. This is what the Doppler effect is. And this is cool. Back to our little speech about waves that are crunched up versus waves that are spread apart like this, right? Obviously, the water doesn't make a sound, <coughs> but this is a perfect mechanical representation of what the sound waves are doing anytime something emitting a sound is in motion, right? Now, picture this as a car approaching you. Even though it was a boat in water, forget it. Now, pretend like I'm going to put some wheels on here. Now, right, okay, perfect. Pretend like that's a car and you're standing right here. As the car approaches you, in other words, before the car gets to you, the waves in front of the car are what? High frequency or low? They're bunched up. They're high frequency. So you hear this. The minute the car is now past you, wheels, right? Now you're dealing with these waves back here, which are a low frequency. And so when the car passes you, the sounds you hear are low. So I'm going to do this in slow motion. The car is approaching you. And as it passes you, okay. Let's just pause for effect. That actually is kind of cool. Like, you know, I know you probably like, you know, you're like wearing all black right now and you got like your Metallica shirt and you're not going to admit in front of your friends that this is cool. But actually, Doppler effect is a real life scenario where science actually makes sense and is pretty cool. And that's it. Remember, if you're struggling with physics in your local high school, you can take it online at Silicon Valley High School and you'll get your credits transferred back to you that way.